Lionel Rio Durand. I'm a postdoctoral researcher from the University of Warwick. And I'm going to talk today about an algorithm known as Metropolis Adjusted Langevin Trajectory that we introduced one year ago. And in this work, we are going to talk about how to tune this sampling algorithm adaptively. This is a joint work with four co-authors, Pavel Sunsov from Google Research, Yuri Bergrinch from the University of Warwick, Charles Margosian from the Flatiron Institute, and Sam Power from the University of Bristol. These sampling algorithms are computational tools for statistics and machine learning, and they are very useful when it comes to approximate numerically some intractable estimators using so-called Monte Carlo methods. We are going to embrace one common framework throughout the talk where we want to generate approximate samples from a target distribution with density pi with respect to Lebesgue's measure on RP, and we are going to denote phi its minus log density up to some constant. We want to generate approximate samples from pi using only two ingredients, the first one being a random generator used drawing IRD samples from the uniform distribution between 0 and 1, and the second one being some analytical knowledge about the target distribution. For instance, we are able to compute point-wise either its density or the gradient of the log density. And we aim at solving several challenges, the first one being to develop samplers that are efficient for high-dimensional targets. We also want these samplers to be robust to ill-conditioned densities, and if possible, we want these samplers to be generic because we don't want to have to build a new sampler every time we deal with a new model. Probably one of the most famous algorithms to perform this task is known as the Metropolis Hastings algorithm, where we will generate a Markov chain starting from an initial distribution mu0, and at every step from a current location x, we will draw a proposal y with respect to a conditional distribution q starting from x. We can cite a few examples. We will focus in particular on the so-called Metropolis Adjusted Langevin algorithm, which is a particular case of the Metropolis Hastings algorithm obtained for this choice of conditional distribution that is informed by the gradient of the log density. In this framework, the purpose of the accept-reject test is to adjust the long-term numerical error induced by discretizing the overdumped Langevin diffusion. This discretization is often used to make a connection with optimization and in particular the gradient descent update, which is obtained by removing the Gaussian noise from the equation. Further connection between sampling and optimization can be observed when looking at convergence quantities, since exponential convergence can be obtained for both algorithms whenever phi is convex. Quantitative rates can even be obtained when phi is strongly convex. Contrary to optimization, one goal of sampling is to provide tools for numerical integration, for instance, to estimate the expectation in the pi of a test function. From the theory of Markov chain, we know that the empirical average across the chain, noted phi hat n here, satisfies a law of large numbers in the central limit theorem under mild assumptions with respect to an asymptotic variance sigma square phi that can be decomposed into two terms, the first one being the variance of phi and of phi, and the second one being the sum of autocorrelation function. We can measure the sampling accuracy by the effective sample size defined as n times this ratio of variances, and this ESS measures the number of IRD samples required to reach the same accuracy as our Monte Carlo estimator. In contrary to optimization, where the goal is to converge to the optimizer, here, with sampling, efficient exploration is crucial for numerical integration. This motivates the use of multiple gradient steps per proposal with persistent momentum, for instance, with Hamiltonian and Monte Carlo and with the so-called kinetic Langevin diffusion. Hamiltonian and Monte Carlo is built upon the so-called Hamiltonian dynamics that describe the motion of a position x in a velocity v or an extended space r to d with respect to this ordinary differential equation. These dynamics preserve an invariant measure that is denoted pi star, which is just the product of the target distribution in pi and a Gaussian distribution for the velocity. And the resulting HMT algorithm is defined first by drawing a fresh velocity from this Gaussian distribution, and then by discretizing Hamiltonian trajectory with respect to a time step h for a length tau. This discretization requires to compute L equal tau divided by h gradient steps, and it is defined by splitting the ODE into two parts. We will first 
follow the dynamics of the velocity for half a step, then compose with the dynamics of the position for a full step, and then compose again with dynamics of the velocity for half a step. This update is known as the leapfrog update, which induces a numerical error delta, which determines the acceptance probability of the algorithm. You can see that there is a last step that is a flip of the momentum upon rejection, which actually does not really matter if you include this step or not with HMC, because at every new iteration, we will simply refresh the velocity fully with the Gaussian distribution. One main advantage of HMC is that its persistent momentum prevents random walk behavior. However, HMC exhibits some resonances as soon as pi has some heterogeneous scales. Essentially, fast mixing for one component can result in arbitrarily slow mixing for other components, and we don't have to go too far to see these problems. For a simple toy Gaussian model with heterogeneous variance, we can see that the corresponding autocorrelation functions are cosine functions with different bandwidths that do not synchronize well, in the sense that if you want to choose one value of tau to control all these correlations at once, you simply cannot in some situations. One approach to mitigate this problem is to draw tau randomly at each iteration in order to smooth these autocorrelation functions. We are going to use here another approach built upon partial momentum refreshment. To build our algorithm, we leverage the so-called kinetic Langevin SDE with respect to a damping parameter gamma that controls how fast the refreshment of the velocity will occur. And by setting this friction or damping parameter gamma to zero, we just recover Hamiltonian dynamics. As this damping parameter gamma increases, the phenomenon of resonance is vanished, but at the same time, persistence of the momentum decreases and therefore efficiency of sampling. This trade-off can be solved for a critical value of damping, and we see on the right-hand side for the toy Gaussian model that all the autocorrelation functions are controlled by the one of the reference scale sigma equal 1 for all the scales that are lower than this scale. Finally, we can notice that the choice of m simply boils down to a preconditioning since it is just a linear mapping from xv to a preconditioned space. So we can think about m to be identity for the rest of the talk without major problems. A discretization of the kinetic Langevin diffusion is to alternate between a leapfrog step and a partial momentum refreshment defined as follows. This is what is done with the GHMC algorithm introduced by Horowitz in 1991, which applies a metropolis correction to each leapfrog step, inducing a momentum flip for every rejected step. And we can see here when we got partial refreshment instead of full refreshment, then momentum flips are no longer fully raised with GHMC, which causes the sampler to backtrack and limit its efficiency. We emphasize that there have been many works to try and mitigate these flips. We highlight in particular one algorithm proposed by Radford Neal, which proposes a slice sampler to correlate the accept-reject coin tosses over time in order to encourage larger periods without momentum flips. To bypass the problem of flips, Entirely, we introduced an algorithm known as Metropolis Adjusted Langevin Trajectory, which has been developed by noticing that we can actually apply a correction to entire Langevin trajectories without perturbating the numerical error that writes as the sum of local energy error incurred by the leapfrog integrator. We can see that compared to GHMC, here the probability of accepting L consecutive steps is greater for MOLT. Furthermore, any new trajectory starts from a fresh Gaussian velocity, which erase momentum flips. MOLT is pi-reversible, and actually HMC is just a particular case of MOLT obtained when the friction gamma is equal to zero. When this friction becomes positive, the algorithm yields erodic trajectories, which prevent both U-turns and resonance. Throughout the talk, we are not now going to focus on the question of tuning its parameters. The mass matrix M, the time step H, and the integration time tau, and this damping parameter gamma. We focus on methods for which computation and storage scale linearly with dimension D. 
which is why we choose a diagonal mass matrix for preconditioning, where uh, Sj is here an online estimate of the variance of the J's component with respect to pi. There are other possibilities for preconditioning. Here we use the one that is used in STAN and we simply normalize the mass with respect to the largest variance in order to stabilize the learning of the principal component that we will see after. When it comes down to tuning damping, we have to solve a trade-off between robustness and efficiency, which can be solved with the critical value of damping in the Gaussian case. And we built upon these Gaussian heuristics, and we aim at tuning this damping as the inverse square root of lambda, where lambda is the largest eigenvalue of the covariance matrix of x in the preconditioned space. We will learn lambda and its eigenvector with an online PCA algorithm. So when we think about PCA, we think about very expensive algorithm with respect to the dimension. However, when we are only interested in the largest eigenvalue and its corresponding eigenvector, online PCA method can be quite efficient and can scale linearly with respect to the dimension for both storage and computation. We leverage CCI PCA, which offers good trade-off between simplicity and performance, can be defined in only one line. Other choices are possible. Here is a review if you are interested. Supported by optimal scaling results from our first paper, we propose to target an acceptance rate alpha star when choosing a step size. By denoting alpha of h, the acceptance probability of mount, we aim to tune time step h such that alpha of h is equal to alpha star. And the left hand side of this equation here can be interpreted as a synthetic gradient for which we have an unbiased estimate out of the algorithm defined as gh. So we learn h by inputting simply gh in a stochastic optimization algorithm. We leverage Adam, but many other choices are possible. We also leverage Adam to tune the integration time tau by optimizing a rescale expected coercion distance, which is more amenable to stochastic optimization than the ESS. Contrary to the ESS, a linear rescaling is not unanimous in the literature. Uh, we have a procedure to tune adaptively this row in the paper. We focus here on the sampling efficiency with respect to the principal component Z measured by the squared projection defined here, and we prioritize the variance of the projection rather than its mean to avoid encouraging antithetic behaviors. By using the fact that X is differentiable in the kinetic Langevin SDE, we can obtain an unbiased estimate of the excursion distance and its gradient, and we can even improve this estimator by reducing its variance using the skew reversibility property of the kinetic Langevin diffusion. We combine these four heuristics into one main adaptive algorithm where we can see we update the mass matrix and the friction on line 2, the step size on line 12, and the integration time on line 14. On the right hand side, we can see an example trace of tau and gamma from one run of this adaptive mode algorithm. And we can see that it converges to a near optimal solution with respect to the worst ESS per gradient evaluation. This is the worst ESS when estimating marginal variances. And we use the same measure to compare different adaptive samplers on six different Bayesian models. We compared them with two different measures of efficiency, the first one being the ESS per gradient evaluation, which is an efficiency per unit of computation, and the second one being the ESS per iteration, which measures the efficiency per unit of storage. We can see that both MOLT and randomized HMC perform much better than generalized HMC and NUTS on these two metrics. We can see that when it comes down to computation, randomized HMC with uniform jitter seems to perform slightly better than MOLT, whereas MOLT seems to perform slightly better when it comes down to storage. Here is a summary of our contributions. A few references. And thank you very much for your attention.